Right now, I'm gonna show you how to remove a shadow from a face inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're gonna to be removing the shadow from the photo. Take a look at this photo up close. We've got the light coming through these chains and it makes it look like he's got a birthmark on his face. Now you could try to remove this at the clone stamp, but it's gonna be very difficult. In fact, I've got a better method. Let's jump in right now. So what we're gonna do is create a new layer on top. All right, so we've got a new layer on top and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna paint over the top and then we'll come back and get the texture later. So let's just grab the brush. And then when you have a brush, make sure we're using the soft round brush. And let's keep our opacity at 100. I'm gonna drop my flow down to about 10. So the shift one will enable you to change the flow to 10%. Let's look at the brush settings. You'll see this icon top left, tap on that, and the brush settings are gonna come open. So what you wanna do is make sure all the dynamics in this first half are turned off, except for transfer, and we can set the transfer opacity to pen pressure. So I'm using a Wacom tablet. If you're not using a pressure sensitive tablet, don't worry about those settings. You can still follow along with a mouse just at that 10% flow. It's just gonna take a little bit longer, be a bit more difficult. But if you're doing a lot of retouching, you should consider getting a pen tablet. I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro Small right here. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is just make the brush size a little bit smaller. I'm just tapping the left bracket key. And what I'm doing is I wanna fill in these areas. I'm not gonna worry about detail, just the color. So on this new layer, I wanna make sure that I can sample the different layers. So let's go under the sample, which is the eyedropper. We're gonna change the sample size to, let's do a five by five average. So it's gonna do five pixels out either direction. Okay, let's go back to our brush, just tap the B key. And now we wanna sample the color very close to this first mark. So if we hold the Alt or the Option key, it'll turn into the eyedropper and tap. Notice the foreground color now changes to that color there. And now we're just gonna gently just paint over there. Just take your time, don't be in a hurry. And just work on those little transitions on the edge there. And when you go up to an area here, where it's a slightly different color, just tap to sample that color and just keep doing that Alt or Option to sample that color and just work your way across the photo, getting rid of all the weird colors. Just blend it in nice and smooth. And if you're wondering what's the difference between using flow and opacity, check out the tutorial that I did last week. And then you'll understand why I'm using flow and not opacity. Just looking for smooth tones. You can see we're starting to get there. Don't worry about the fact that we're losing all the detail. We just want to smoothen this out. All right, let's get into here. So you want to think, okay, what's going to be the real color and what's going to be that shadow color? So we can see that darker color there is the shadow color. So let's go with the lighter color. Just go up there under the eye. There we go. Just blending those edges together on the cheek. And now you might be able to do this quicker if you use a higher flow. But I'm just taking my time. Don't be in a hurry. You can really start to see the loss of detail around here where the beard would be. Don't worry about it. Just going to go smaller in here to get in there for the lip. And this is a low resolution photo that was shot on a phone. So a high resolution photo is actually gonna be easier to work on than this. All 
And all I'm going to do here is just smoothing out the transition because it's okay to have some shadow on that side there. That's a little bit natural. So let's select that shadow and just kind of blend it in. Because we will have shadow from his collar from different areas like that. That's quite natural. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've done so far. If we look at this, there we go. There's before and there's after. So we've been able to smoothen out these tones quite nicely. What we need to do now is we need to put some texture back in there. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit and we can see this before and after. So we've managed to smoothen everything out as far as the colors go. Now what we want to do is just to add some texture back on here because right now it's very just flat. So what we're going to do is create a new layer that we're going to put this texture on. And then we're going to use our clone stamp. So let's select the clone stamp from the left. And this is what we're going to use to clone the texture. Now let's make sure the settings are what we need. So we're going to go up under the sample, make sure it says current and below, which means it's going to select the layers underneath. Otherwise it wouldn't get anything and nothing would happen. Let's grab the burst settings. Make sure we don't have shape dynamics on. If you're using a pen, you could set it to transfer a pen pressure, but in fact, why don't we just turn off all the dynamics and we're just going to do it just regular and that would be the same for a mouse. All right, almost there. One thing left is let's go under the window and we're going to open the clone source. So how this works is if we hit the Alt or the Option key, we can sample an area with the clone stamp and notice that area is there and we can paint it. But we don't want to do that. We want to do the opposite. We want to flip it. So I can take the texture from the left side of the face and apply it to the right side of the face. So go under where it says width, tap on here. And now look, if I sample here, see how now it's painting the opposite way. That's exactly what we want. So this is going to work great. Now the reason I didn't just copy this side to the other side, well, there's a couple of different reasons I didn't do that. One of them, it gets very blotchy and it's very difficult to do that. So I wanted smooth tones, so I was able to do those tones independently. And the other reason that we're going to do the texture separately is this way, you know, the tones are not going to be identical on the left. So we're not going to copy all the shadow and all the detail on the left to the right, because that's going to look kind of fake. This way it's going to look more natural. And also frequency separation was not able to get those. So if you're wondering, why didn't you use frequency separation? That's why. All right, so why don't we create a sample here by hitting the Alt or the Option key on that cheek, and then we're going to go to about the same area. Now notice what I'm doing here. I'm just gently applying, and what I want to apply is the texture. So all I'm doing is grabbing the texture from the other side of the face. Now because I'm using a pen, I might just turn on pen pressure from mine. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to turn transfer pen pressure. Um, if you didn't do that, you could lower the opacity. Right now I've got the opacity and the flow up at 100. So if you're not using pen pressure, drop the opacity down about 30% or 50. Just try and see where it works best. Okay, so we're just going in here and now I'm just grabbing that texture. Let's go into this area here. Now don't try to do the whole face, just do the areas where that texture is missing. Remember, Alter Option, Sample, then we tap to Paint. And don't try to do it all in one. See how I'm just doing little dabs here? I'm just dabbing. Not dabbing, but dabbing. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> YouTubers know what I mean. And see how we're starting to put this texture back in here now. And it's not looking like just flat painted anymore. So right now you might notice some weird things going on with the tones. Watch this. If I go here and I change the blend mode now from normal all the way down to soft light, notice how it just blends everything in now. We can see how things are starting to just blend in nicely. In this area here, I don't want it to flip. So I'm just going to turn that flip off and we're just going to kind of just work our way around here with the texture. And notice how that soft light is just giving us the texture and not the tone. It's not affecting the color.
All right, let's have a look and see where we're at right now. If we do this and we look at it, there's before and there's after. So it looks like there's a couple of little places we could go over here a little bit more, maybe work under the neck a little bit. So you could spend a little bit more time on it and get it absolutely perfect, but I think you see the steps here. If we look at this, there we go before, there's a photo you just don't think you could use, and then after, boom. So anyway, let me know in the comments if you guys found this video useful and if you learned anything new, and also if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, hit the subscribe button, turn on all notifications. If you like this, smash the like button into dust, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.